Jessica Alba. You look good. Thank you. So do you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Please. I'm here all night. All right. Uh, <laughs> They can't get Your enough hair of me. Looks great too. Th oh, this yeah. looks weird every night, doesn't it? <laughs> it does look good tonight. There you go. <laughs> Goes right back. Uh, how are you? Everything good? Everything's wonderful. You're having such an amazing year. You've had two hit films. Mm -hmm. Most people can go a whole career and not have one. You have two, and I was thinking about it today. Both of these films were based on comic books. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, you must be really getting a lot of, like, a, a large nerd fan base at this point. Yeah, you know, you know what's weird is I actually have a lot of um, middle-aged men coming up to me a lot more. Because I thought I'd probably get more of, like, the nerd comic book. A lot of, like, yeah, comic book convention no, people. But I, no, it's middle-aged men. It's middle-aged men and their wives going, stop it, honey. Don't bother her. Wait, stop it. Middle-aged men go up to you with their wives? Yeah, that takes yeah. guts. <laughs> that yeah. takes, they're probably just in such a trance, they forget their wife is with no, them. No, they're very sweet. And a lot of them, you know, bring me magazines. Like they, they're, it's like they're walking around with GQ or something. I don't know. Right. So there's just a lot of middle-aged men that are obsessed with you. Not obsessed, but they're fans. Right. Well, that's very nice. Yeah, and, and the wives are they mad? Are they mad? Are they giving you a look, or they don't no, blame you? No, no. They're, I think they, they're, you know, hitting their husbands. <laughs> like, right. They're not saying like, her. back off. You know. No, no, Be no. Okay. No. <laughs> Does anyone do that, or is that just me? I've, I've seen that on sitcoms, and I don't know how to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, there's something about your job that I think would be, I, I don't quite understand it, but uh, part of your job is you, you have to be able to convince people who go to movies that you're in, in love with a guy. Right. And I'm curious, is that something where it just depends on the chemistry you have with that actor? Or what happens if they cast an actor and you just don't have chemistry with that actor, but that's who they cast? Yeah. I mean, how does it work? No, I mean, a lot of people with this movie particularly, because I was with Paul Walker, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, you know, that must have been hard, Paul Walker such a good-looking guy, and I was like, well, actually, I have chemistry with my pug, Sid. Right. I have chemistry with, you know, this cup. I have chemistry. I can have chemistry with you. Oh, thanks. After the cup. <laughs> but, you know, like, it's my... A cup or, uh, <laughs> that dead flower or no. you? No, my job, my job is to... Is, sure. ...is to act in love. You can act in love? Oh, you're doing it now. Yeah. <laughs> Look, and I'm just being scared. <laughs> This is me when I try and act in love. <laughs> it just looks like I'm off the medication, yeah. Yeah, you just, like, stare longingly. Just stare longingly? Yeah, and I just think of, like, chocolate cake. <laughs> Why can't you just think of me? What's the problem? I love how I look at you, but think of chocolate cake, the and that's how it works. The is, is male actors think I am just thinking of them, and, and they should know no difference. Except when you go, mmm, chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> and then they know, then they yeah. know. Now, this movie, Into the Blue, it looks it looks amazing. They, yeah. they, a lot of the underwater photography is just gorgeous. Yeah, it's, it, the, the guy who did the underwater photography um, did National Geographic. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, then, and, and, and in this movie, I guess, were, were you... I didn't realize it would be a problem, but when you're underwater, a lot of people might not like the way they look when they're underwater. No, I mean, who wants a camera following them in a bikini underwater, like, bad angles? And, and worse is like, okay, so then I get my close-ups. It's right. hard enough to act underwater, but then they go in for the close-up, and I saw the dailies, and my lips are huge. So Why are the they huge? Mess, is it because of, like, the... the no, my lips are huge anyway. Right. Just genetics, my dad, right. you know. Right, right. So, um... No, so with the mask, everyone else has thin lips, and then they have these beautiful, like, luscious lips when right, they have the mask right. on. And me, I look like a friggin' parrotfish. Like, I have these, like, huge clown <laughs> lips. Well, and don't make every... that expression. And it won't yeah. You haven't gone like mm -hmm. like... <laughs> No, but that's what I look like every time I have the mask on. It, like, oh, it pushes it down it, a little bit. Yeah, and it makes my lips look so big and, and cartoonish that they couldn't use any of my close-ups, really. Well, so. you look amazing in this movie. <laughs> Underwater, you. out of the water, everything. <laughs> and and also, a lot of... Uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of... You won't be acting next time. <laughs> um, a lot of actresses would kill to have big lips. I mean, your lips are yeah, beautiful. A lot yeah, yeah, of... no. But in, in L.A., they, they, there's a lot of those, those plastic surgery ladies. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they, they, a lot of uh, women out there have their lips inflated. Yeah, and they all kind of look like... You know. <laughs> like that. This is me with yeah. plastic surgery. <laughs> Welcome to Late Night. We have a good show. Yeah. 
Um, now, one of the things that freaked me out, and I don't know how they do this, because they're you're falling in love again. Uh, <laughs> no, <I was> <laughs> oh, that was his listening. <laughs> ah! um, they, you shot this in the in the ocean with real sharks, yes. and there are scenes where. Sharks are coming up to you, and I'm thinking, is that a robot shark? It looks no, like a real shark. No, no, there were no robot sharks. I wished there were robot sharks. Yeah. But I had, you know, they said, we're going to die with real sharks, and they do it all the time. But usually they do it in a controlled environment where, you know, the tourists are holding hands with wetsuits. They put us in bathing suits, and they just threw blood and, or fish blood. Well, and, well, they're and not making guts. it worse. It's one thing just to have you in the water with swimming with sharks, sharks, but then when period. they throw blood on blood you. on us. No no joke. And so the sharks are all excited because they're eating. Right. And, and, and they're going in circles all around us. And, and then they put us in there and then they turn on the cameras and say, go. There's, a, there's, there's one scene where it looked like you're actually pushing a shark away. Yeah, well, what happened was is I was wearing a um, half wetsuit and, and it was silver. Right. And when I was moving my head around, the reflection of the sun made me look like fish. So this one shark kept coming after my head thinking I was a fish because they're not the brightest animals in the world. Right. And I didn't know this. Neither is the guy who said, let's put you in a silver suit, <laughs> throw blood on you, and put you in a shark tank. Well, yeah, yeah I mean... We got problems with him, too. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, so I didn't know that this one shark was going after my double all day, so then I go down for my, my thing, and, and all of a sudden, in the peripheral, in my peripheral, I saw yeah. this shark, and then and it's a close-up, and I turned around, and I whacked the shark away when I saw it coming towards me, yeah. and then I looked up at the camera, and I was going, uh-uh! Like, I mean, you can't speak underwater, so I was just going, uh-uh! And, they, and it's, they have it in the movie. They right. have me you going, see it. Uh -uh. You, they, they, you see it. You actually, the shark comes near you, and you just I, sort of, like, shove, yeah, it away. shove it away. Like, ah, leave me alone. Yeah, like, get away from me. I would have just gone into the fetal position in the yeah, water and started you, whimpering. But if you go in the fetal position and start whimpering, they may actually take a, a little taste. I didn't say there's any reasoning behind what I would do. <laughs> Be dictated by naked fear. Well, they told me that if you if you hit them in the nose, it deflects them because that's their most sensitive area. So I was going for the nose, kind of, but it was right. just kind of insane. That's one of the things I love is the the advice you get about if, if a grizzly attacks you. Yeah. They say uh, don't do anything, but then if it really attacks you, hit it in the nose. And then you said, what does that do? It'll either make it run away or it'll make it angrier and it will kill you. <laughs> Great. And you're like, what are you, a 50 50. You're like, right. thanks exactly. for the piece of advice. And, and the guy that gave me the advice uh, was a shark wrangler, and he had half of a calf. Because <laughs> the shark took the other half of his calf. The shark's in yeah. the corner eating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm an idiot. Uh, we have a clip here. Anything we need to know for this, this clip? Oh, uh, yes. Um, in the movie, originally, at the end of the movie, I had, was the damsel in distress, and Paul Walker's character comes and saves me, and I was like, I'm the Dark Angel. I can do stunts. Right. I should be doing some stuff. So uh, this is me after I'm dragging a six foot six, 250-pound man across a boat, and this is what I have to do to him because he's handcuffed to me. Let's take a look at this clip of Into the Blue. Thanks so much. Thank you were great. You. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Jeff Garland coming up. We'll take a break. We'll be right back.